Hi there, my name is Bonnie Garcia, and this is Mastery in the Unit 5. Welcome to the second module of this video course, in which we are going to learn different kinds of integration of the Unit 5 with external frameworks, libraries, and technologies. This module is composed by seven individual videos. First of all, we are going to see the Mokito extension, a Unit 5 extension provided by the JUnit 5 team to use Mokito, which is a notorious mock framework for Java. Thanks to this, we are going to implement real unit tests, that is, the isolation of the system under test from its dependent non components in a very easy way. Second, we study the Spring extension, which is the official extension provided in the version 5 of the Spring framework. This extension integrates Spring into the, the JUnit 5 programming model. This way, we are able to use a Spring's application context, that is, the Spring's dependency container, in our tests. This is very useful to implement integration tests for Spring-based applications. Third, we review the Selenium extension, implemented by Selenium Jupyter, an open source project providing a JUnit 5 extension for Selenium WebDriver, which is the testing framework for web application. Thanks to this extension, we can use different browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, and so on, even headlet browsers such as HTML Unit or PhantomJS to interact automatically with web applications. Moreover, this extension allows to use the Appium framework to interact with mobile devices such as emulated Android smartphone, for example. Fourth, we review the Cucumber extension, that is, the official extension provided by the Cucumber team to re integrate with JUnit 5. Cucumber allows to specify acceptance tests following a behavior driven development style, using the Gherkin language. Then, we see how the open source JUnit 5 Docker extension can be used to start Docker containers downloading the image from Docker Hub before the execution of our JUnit 5 tests. Then, we will discover that the extension model is not the only way of interacting with external technologies by JUnit tests. For example, in order to run Jupyter tests in an Android project, that is, a Gradle based to execute typically on Android Studio, we can use the Android JUnit 5 plugin. Finally, we analyze several utilities to carry out tests for REST services. Even though there is no custom extension for assessing REST services using JUnit 5 at the moment of this recording, the integration with REST libraries is straightforward. We simply need to include the proper dependency in our project and use it in our tests. In this domain, we study REST Assured and also a Spring for implement and test our REST services. Let's move on now to the first video of the module, about Mokito. Mokito is an open source mock unit testing framework for Java, first released on April 2008. Of course, Mokito is not the only framework for Java. There are others, such as EasyMock, JMock, PowerMock, or JMockit. We can say that at the moment of this recording, Mokito is the preferred mock framework in Java tests for most of the developers. To justify that claim, we use the picture shown in the screen, which shows the evolution of the terms Mokito, EasyMock, JMock, PowerMock, and JMockit in Google Trends from 2004 to 2017. We can see there was a significant interest on EasyMock and JMock at the beginning. Nevertheless, Mokito was increasingly more demanded to the detriment of the REST frameworks. Unit testing is a method by which individual pieces of source code are tested to verify that the design and implementation for that unit has been correctly implemented. There are four phases executed in sequence in a unit test case, 
illustrated in the diagram in the screen. First, the test case initializes the test fixture, that is, the before picture required for the system under test to exhibit the expected behavior. Then, the exercise fades, the test case interacts with the system under test, getting some outcome from it as a result. The system under test usually queries another component, named dependent non component. Third, in the verify stage, the test case determines if the expected outcome is as expected, using assertions also known as predicates. In the last stage, the test case tears down the test fixture to put the system under test back into the initial state. Unit testing should be done with the unit under test in isolation, that is, without interacting with its dependent odd components. To that, test doubles are employed to replace any components on which the system under test depends. A mock object replaces the real component with programmed expectations about the real object. In few words, Mokito is a testing framework that provides an API to isolate the system under test to its dependent on components. Generally speaking, the use of Mokito involves three different steps. First one is the mocking object stage. In order to isolate our system under test, we use the Mokito API to create mocks of its associated dependent on components. This way, we guarantee that the system under test is not depending in its real dependent components, and our unit test is actually focused in the system under test. The second stage is called setting expectations. The differential aspect of mock objects with respect to other test doubles, such as a stab, is that mock objects can be programmed with custom expectations according to the needs of the unit tests. By default, mock objects mimic the behavior of real objects. In practical terms, that means that the mock objects returns a property dummy values such as false for boolean types, null for objects, zero for integer, and so on. Okito allows to change this behavior with a race API, allowing to stabbing to return a specific value when a method is called. Finally, verification. At the end of the day, we are creating tests, and thus, we need to implement some kind of verification for the system under test. Mokito provides a powerful API to carry out different types of verifications. With this API, we assess the interactions with the system under test and dependent components, verifying the invocation order with a mock, or capturing and verifying the argument passed to a stab method. In addition, the verification capabilities of Mokito can be complemented with the built-in assertion capability of JUnit or even use a third-party assertion library such as Hamcrest, AssertJ, etc. The following table summarizes the Mokito APIs grouped by the above mentioned phases. First, about mocking objects, we find the annotation mock used to identify a mock object to be created by Mokito. This is used typically for dependent on components. Then, the annotation inject mocks identifies the object in which the mocks are going to be injected. This is used typically to the unit we want to test, that is, our system under tests. Finally, the annotation spy allows to create a spy object, that is, a partial mock implementation since they use the real implementation in non stab methods. Regarding the setting expectation stage, Mokito provides different capabilities. In few words, we can specify a given action of the mock object using the method when, and an action is triggered when this method is invoked. This action can be returned a value throwing an exception 
provide a user defined answer, call the real method, or even do nothing. Moreover, Mokito provides these capabilities using the behavior driven development style, implemented as given the initial context, when the event occurs, and then ensuring some outcomes. Mokito provides different methods to verify the invocation of mock objects. This verification can be optionally enhanced using methods to assess the number of invocation to the mock objects, and even verify if a stub method has no interactions. Then, the annotation capture allows to define an argument capture object aimed to verify the argument passed to a stopped method. Finally, the Mokito method in order facilitates verifying if interactions with a mock were performed in a given order. Let's see now how Mokito and JUnit5 can work together. The JUnit5 team provides a ready-to-use Java class implementing a simple but effective extension for Mokito. This class can be found in the JUnit5 user guide, and its code is shown in this slide. Inspecting the class above, we can check that it is simple a use case of the Jupyter extension model, which implements the extensions callback, test instant postprocessor, and parameter resolver. Thanks to the first, after the test case is created, the method postprocess test instance is invoked, and in the body of this method, the initialization of mocks is carried out. In addition, this extension also implements the interface parameter resolver. That means that dependency injection at method level will be allowed in tests with register this extension. In particular, the annotation will inject mock objects for test parameters annotated with the annotation mock. Let's see some examples to clarify the use of this extension together with Mokito. As usual, you can find the source code of this example on the GitHub repository, github.com slash bonigarcia slash mastering dash junit5. A copy of the above extension is contained in the project junit5 mokito. To guide these examples, we are going to use a typical use case in software applications, the login of a user in a software system. In this use case, we are going to suppose that a user interacts with a system made up by three classes. Login controller, a class which receives the request from the user, returning a response as a result. Next component is called login service. In the class implementing this service, a call to the persistent layers is made. Finally, the login repository class allows to access the persistent layers of the system, typically implemented by means of a database. This class can also be called data access object DAO. First of all, we are going to test the controller component. Since we are doing unit tests, we need to isolate the login controller from the rest of the system. To do that, we need to mock its dependencies, in this example, the login service component. Using the system under test and dependent on component terminology explained at the beginning, in this case, our system under test is the login controller class and the dependent on component is login service. Let's see the source code of our tests. First, we need to register the Mokito station using the annotation extend with. Then, we need to declare the system under test with inject mocks annotation, and also its dependent on components with the annotation mock. Then, we implement two tests annotated methods with test. First one, specify that when the method logit of mock login service is called, the method should return 
true. After that, the system under test is actually exercised, and its response is verified. In this case, the returning street must be OK. Moreover, the Mokito API is used again to assess that no more interaction with the mock login service is done. The second test is equivalent but stopping the myth of login to return false, and therefore the re response of the system under test, the login controller class, must be KO in this case. If we execute this test simply inspecting the trace on the standard output, we can check that the system under test has been actually executed, and in addition, we assure that the verification state has been succeeded in both tests since both of them have passed. Let's move on now to the oral sample in which the negative scenarios, that is, error situations, is tested for the component login controller. The following class contains two tests. First one is devoted to assess the response of the system, and this response should be error when a null form is used. In the second test, first we program the method login of the mock login service to raise an exception with any form is used. Then we exercise the system under test and assess that the response is actually an error. Again, when running these tests in the cell, we can confirm that both of tests are correctly executed and the system under test is exercised. Let's see an example using the behavior-driven development style. To that aim, the class BDD Mokito is used. Notice that the static method given of this class is imported in the example. Then, four tests are implemented. In fact, these four tests are exactly the same implemented in the previous example, but this time using the BDD style. The following class provides a simple example for capturing the argument of a mock object. We define a class property of type argument captor, which is annotated with the annotation captor. Then, in the body of the test, the system under test, login service in this case, is exercised. Then, the argument of the method login are captured. Finally, the value of this argument is verified. Once again, in the console we can check that the system under test was actually exercised and the test is declared as successful. In the last example, we are going to use an spy object. By default, an spy uses the real implementation for non-stop methods. In this way, if we don't stop methods in an spy object, what we get is the real object in our tests. This is what is happening in the next example. As you can see, we are using the login service as our system under test, and then we spy the object login repository. Due to the fact that in the body of the test we are not programming expectation in the spy object, we are assessing the real system in the test. All in all, the test data is prepared to get a login correct and then some dummy values for an incorrect login. In the shell, we can check that both tests were correctly executed, and in this case, the real components, both login service and login repository, were actually exercised. <laughs>